Okay. All right. Cool. All right. Well, uh, my name is Mario Marquez, and I'm here with the Monterey Children's House of Denver, and uh, we thank you for joining us for this uh, uh, presentation on uh, healthy nutrition choices for children. And today we're joined uh, by Clark Simcoe, who's one of our parents here at MCHD, and is also a dietitian with the Colorado Children's Hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for joining us. Yeah, no problem. And uh, so we just had a few questions, and yeah. uh, hopefully you can help us out. It's that time of year. Everybody comes back from the holidays, yeah. ready to get on that uh, nutrition kick. Yeah, and health and, binge. Yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah. And uh, but that's all, that, that that also includes our kids, and I yeah. uh, want to make sure we're doing right by them. And so um, just uh, wanted to pick your brain a little bit for yeah. some ideas. Um, sure. But uh, what what are you know something to be aware of as parents? What are the consequences of uh, undernutrition or not being you know having the right the right food? Sure. So I would preface that. In the United States, it's pretty rare nowadays for kids to be severely undernourished, like from a medical standpoint. We are pretty lucky in this country that we have a pretty easy access to calories and food. So, you know, um, so, but that being said, there are still consequences for um, missing out on certain areas of nutrition. So, um, so I would say that um, in general, you know, when we think about it, we think about growth of kids. Kids are growing so much more in the adults we've reached our prime. Kids need to need to grow and they need the right nutrients and balance of things to grow. Um, so that being said, you think about their neurological development. So are they going to grow um, from a developmental standpoint to their full potential? Um, and are they going to grow from a physical standpoint to their full potential? Uh, so those are kind of the consequences that uh, could arise from undernutrition or uh, or such, but as I prefaced before, it's pretty rare nowadays for, um, but it can, st it could still happen for a variety of medical reasons or, or, uh, or social reasons, but, um, but it's more rare nowadays in the United States. So, um, does that make sense? That, yeah. that def makes yeah. def definite sense. And so yeah. since we're probably teetering on the opposite end of that, of, yeah. you know, the overweight, yeah, yeah um, for sure. you know, nowadays these, uh, children's food is marketed in such a way that uh, you know it's got all the superhero characters on it and all these good things and yeah. you know a lot of times as parents we think we're buying the right things because uh you know it's yogurt you know it's mm -hmm. yogurt for kids but uh what, what's important for parents to know about uh you know why why, why should they be aware of the hidden sugars in foods yeah it, you hit the nail on the head with marketing especially too um and the fact is that not even just kids adults too we're just programmed biologically to like sugar i mean it's just the evil nature of the way we evolved and um you know and it's just the way it is and so we can luckily as adults and as parents be aware of it that that is just nature and we can just uh be okay with that and just work around it basically so um the main reason i would say for being aware of uh, sugar in the foods especially for kids is that it can often replace other nutrients of value so um you know kids need energy obviously to do all the wonderful kid things they do but if the sugar is replacing protein or fats or just other micronutrients too, um, you know, if they're eating a, a sugary yogurt and, you know, they're not getting as much protein as they would from another yogurt, then, you know, that could have an impact on, on nutrition for sure. Um, and then, as you mentioned too, if we have too many of those items that have added sugars in them, then, you know, you do, even at a young age nowadays, it's just what we're facing nowadays that um, you could face being overweight earlier and having to, the myriad of health issues that can come from that, unfortunately. So, um, so it's definitely something to look out for. It's there in a lot of different things nowadays. So you just have to be a, a label reader and, um, and, uh, and do that. And as I mentioned before too, it's added sugars that we're really worried about. And luckily there's some label changes that are coming out in the United States now where you will be able to more easily identify if there's added sugars in the product, okay. product or not. So, um, something like a, um, something like uh you know uh, like yogurt has natural sugar as well or milk has natural sugar if there's carbohydrate in there that is sugar but um if you have chocolate milk you're gonna have added sugar in there as well so right. they're starting to delineate in the back label of products uh, natural sugars which are generally fine and just a product of milk being milk and added sugars which would be a product of it being strawberry milk or chocolate milk sort of thing so it's sure. just the added sugars you want to Avoid. Good, good. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's a tough call because you've got, you know, all these delicious foods yeah. and, and things that, that catches, catch the kid's eye. Yeah. And, and especially with, you know, things like yogurt, you know, there's, I'm sure there's other ways, you know, just by adding natural fruit, that yeah. you can give it some flavor and, uh, you know, have, For the, sure. have the kids. Yeah. Um, and then one thing I, 
uh, remembered on my notes here about sugars too that um, is it's related to nutrition is dental cavities. So that's the other really big thing that you have to worry about with added sugar and and juice in particular is something that is still really popular with parents today. Although I like to tell parents I work with that it's really not needed. It's certainly something that's enjoyable to do, and we all even grew up with it. But it's there are still some parents out there that um, we all grew up with it, so we think that it's something you have to have. Right. It's an enjoyment, but it's not something that a kid needs to have to grow properly. So, um, so dental cavities from that perspective can really influence adult teeth. Right. Yeah, so that's another reason. Milk, water, probably the go-to. Yeah, there. milk and water are, are just fine for for kids. So, yeah. I and mean, like I said, it's not that you can't ever do juice if you want to, but daily juice isn't really needed anymore it's it's uh, that's kind of the wisdom today so. right right maybe a nice treat down, yeah yeah <laughs> down the road okay okay yeah. well that being said you know what are some good uh any suggestions for some easy quick uh snack ideas for children and uh, yeah uh, you know as working parents we're always on the go so yeah i mean i am too so i mean it, it takes a lot of work but it, it pays off i think you know to for kids to have a to enjoy foods you know i think it, um, so snack ideas that I go for, um, I think the number one that pops in my head is hummus. Like it's, it's just a great, pro I think hummus is awesome. It's easy to take around and kids like dipping things in things. I, it's something about kids, you know? And so <laughs> you can dip a lot of things in hummus. I mean, vegetables, so bell peppers and tomatoes and other vegetables, if they're into like broccoli and stuff, or just like healthy types of crackers and things if that's what they want to go. But hummus has fat and protein, and generally you aren't going to find a hummus with sugar in it. You could check and just to make sure, but generally hummus doesn't have any added sugar. Um, you never know what companies are doing nowadays. Right, but, right. but generally it's just, you know, it's protein from the beans, and it has olive oil or other oil in it for some fat too. So it's a really well-balanced thing for kids to snack on that fills them up. Uh, so I like hummus. Um, nuts are really easy to take around with you too. I mean, you can get trail mixes, but I mean, you know, if you kids like nuts and, and as long as they don't have any allergies, then I mean, nuts are just, they last forever. They can stay in a bag in your car um, and they fill kids up like, and they fill me up, they fill adults up too. So I mean, a little goes a long way. Um, and fruits are super easy to take around with you. Um, like the fruits in the wintertime now that are in the oranges and the little peelable things. I mean, they have their own you know, built-in packaging, you don't have to, you know, like, put them in a container or anything. You exactly. can just throw them in the car, so that, I think that's why fruit is really convenient. Um, and they make those cuties, you know, so yeah. easy to peel now for kids. That it's yeah, that it's so hard. For sure, I mean, yeah, my daughter loves them, I mean, she eats them every day. And then, with fruit, I mean, you, we think of fruit as having, as being sugary, but it, like I said before, it's natural sugar, and so, it has other things that go along with it that are beneficial. There's other nutrients, there's fiber in them too, there's water in them. So even though, you know, they're a carbohydrate, you know, it's not really anything to worry about. And it's just such an easy snack for parents on the go. Fruit is so apples, those oranges, um, things like that. So, so the more um, things you can grow, probably the better to eat. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I mean, I, I try to, you know, I try to stick with snacks that, you know, don't have to come in a package because it's just, I think they're easier, but I mean, uh, if you have to go with things like, you know, you can try to find some crackers and things like that. But in general, you know, those things that come from just the ground are, are they're generally pretty easy to keep around. Like I said, nuts last forever. Uh, fruits really come in their own packaging. And so, um, yeah, so that's, those are some of the ones. That, oh, cherry tomatoes are also ones that I, I almost give my daughter almost every single day because they're in season year round nowadays from here you grow them in greenhouses so and um and so those are they're really affordable i think so no it makes makes perfect sense and even now it's even more convenient as well with the uh i think they make the little hummus packets to go as well so you're right yeah cups of it yeah so if you're, if you're a working parent and you need yeah. that convenience it's, it's there for, at your fingertips and one other that pops on my mind too that i use too for my daughter is um, you often think of jerky as like a weird thing, but if you're into meat and you're and uh, and that's okay with you, then um, jerky that doesn't have flavorings or like sugar in it is like it's a savory thing that has protein. That's a different flavor that kids don't always really get, and it's also really easy and lasts forever. So um, you know it has protein, it has iron. I think those are two you know, iron, especially is one that growing kids need a lot of nowadays uh, when they're growing, and so. Um, 
so that's one that you know if you're into that then i would definitely yeah go for it so True. it's a different sort of flavor kids get a lot of you know fruits and cheeses and things and so right. it's hard to find protein snacks you know right. um cheese has some protein but so hummus has protein and jerky is not one i use so. that's a, that's a good choice and yeah. they give you some options definitely. yeah like options that. yeah for sure okay perfect and yeah. i you know one last question going into this and uh yeah, sure. you know as, as we're kind of going along those lines what do you suggest as a, as a dietitian you know working with kids you know, you have those kids who are just picky eaters. I mean, yeah. mac and cheese, and it's kind of t- tough to, get, to yeah. get beyond that. How, what are some suggestions for those picky eaters? Sure, yeah. So I would say that if you have what we call a picky eater in your family, like you're not alone. It's going to happen almost every parent, I think, and every kid at some point. It just depends on how much. And so I guess there's a couple, when I've worked with parents on this before, uh, particularly in grad school. Um, there's a couple of things I like to say. And the first is just to be patient as a parent. Um, it's hard to be patient nowadays. We're really busy, <laughs> but just be patient as a parent um, with your kid in this in this stage um, because it doesn't last forever. And if you're patient and you aren't forceful, um, your child will come out of it in a much uh, happier relationship with food. Um, and so that goes into the next thing, which is not to force the child to eat anything or to st- stay at the table and eat this or that um, if they are going through a pickier phase, which also I would say, try not to label it in front of them as being a picky eater. Try not to call them a picky eater yourself. Um, it's only gonna, that tends to, from my experience, only give them a label to attach to themselves. And it's really, as a kid, it's hard for them to then let go of that. Right. They want to, they like, they're like, oh, I'm a, uh, X, Y, or Z, like I'm a picky eater or I'm like, you know, tall or something. And so they want to be that because they've, you've given them that identity right. as that. And so if you as a parent just step back and, you know, and you just, they're your son or daughter, like, and they are who they are, then um, that's one less hurdle you have to jump over. Um, and so the next thing would be to, um, to model behavior as a parent, which can be difficult. <laughs> and by modeling, I don't necessarily mean that you're making a big deal out of, I'm eating my vegetables. Right. <laughs> like, look at me eating my vegetables. Just be normal about it. Like I said, when you're being patient, um, sit at the table as a family with the dinner and, and serve the same food you're eating to them um, and eat your food in the way you would want them to eat it. And it's not going to happen right away. It's right. not even going to happen in a week. It's probably maybe not even going to happen in two weeks. It just depends. And I think that you will find you see your kids absorb what they see and they will try what you're doing if you're modeling the behavior you want them to do just naturally um, doing I mean one point I said there was um, serving the same things as what you're eating um, to model I would also add the caveat of um, that kids are different than adults and I am guilty of this too sometimes so serve kid-friendly portions to a kid that's a picky eater or, or even just not a picky eater just serve kid-friendly portions um, I'm guilty of it, like I said, too. I'll find myself I'm like, oh, I just gave her like a giant bowl of pasta. <laughs> I'm like, of my size. You're just going, you're filling stuff up, and you're not thinking right. about it. And um, especially a kid who is going through a pickier stage, if you serve them an adult sized portion of food, not thinking about it, it can be really overwhelming for kids, especially if they're going through that phase. Uh, that phase. And so serving less than what you would think is an adult is appropriate they can always have seconds kids can always have seconds if they fill up on something and they want more um if you think about it as like if you and i were super hungry and we went to one of those like steakhouses that serve you like the 60 ounce steaks or whatever (laughs) you might be really hungry but it's really overwhelming to see that much food on your plate and so it's really hard to imagine eating that much food even if you were hungry so just small kid sized portions of the same thing you're eating and model that behavior is um are the key points um yeah i think i think those are the main ones for for dealing with it and then being patient and i think that it will ride itself out most kids do even if they're only wanting to eat mac and cheese like you mentioned at the beginning um, you can certainly serve them mac and cheese but serve them the two or you know one or two other things that you're having or that you want them to expand their palate with right um they won't starve they'll be <laughs> they'll be okay especially like i said in today's day and age uh, we have access to food more than we ever used to and right. so um they will not go too long before expanding out to other things um and uh if you are concerned just realize that kids are always growing at a different rate um 
as adults, it's hard for us to remember that because we eat this pretty much the same portion of food every single day, you know, and we're pretty much done growing and a lot of us are trying to lose weight. Right, you know? right, so, right, right. So, uh, but kids, they, we think of them as growing, but they really don't grow in a straight line. They grow in a roller coaster sort of sure. pattern. And so some days they'll eat less or hardly, it'll seem like hardly anything. And then the next day they'll eat a ton. And that's totally normal for a kid to do. So. Right. Well, and as working parents too, you know, if you have that big portion and instead of giving them that big portion, save a little bit of that and you got lunch for tomorrow. Oh, yeah. You know? yes. Yeah, I do that all the time. <laughs> yeah, leftovers are what I send for lunch pretty yep. much. Yep. Day, absolutely. So, absolutely. Sure. Well, uh, Mr. Simcoe, yeah. I want to thank you for coming yeah, in so and uh, yeah. sharing some information with us. If any of, uh, of our parents have any more questions, feel free to reach out. Yeah. We'll be happy to answer to answer and uh, and help you guys as we're all on this mission to help our kids yeah. live a, a healthier lifestyle. And uh, yeah. thank you for coming in. Yeah, no problem. That's what I love talking about. So I was happy to do it. Appreciate it. Thank yeah, you very no much. Problem. Thanks.